Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In the first video in this series, I showed you how to set up TACX on a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to show you the Cisco side of setup, and this is just going to be a very basic setup, and we'll we'll go into some other details in a follow-up video where you go into command level authorization. So if you've got an intern that you can only allow them to do certain commands, or you have an auditor come in, you can allow them to do show run, but nothing else. So to get the process started, we'll first go into configure mode and you'll need to set up a local user account if you don't already have one. So we'll do username, Cisco, privilege, and I normally will do privilege 15 by default when I'm setting up my, uh, my backup account on this. And then secret and we'll just make this one Cisco for now. I know it's not secure, but just for the purposes of illustration, we'll, we'll show you what's possible. Now, to get the ball rolling, we just do AAA new model. And then that allows us to enter the additional commands we're going to need to do. So we'll do AAA authentication login default. Now, this is where I will do mine a little bit differently than some. I will tell it to do local lookup first. This way, in case TACX is unresponsive or you've made a configuration error where either it be on the Cisco device or on the Raspberry Pi TACX, you still have a way of getting in without having to go through the lovely password recovery process that so many of us have, have done over the years. And then we'll say group and then TACX plus. And then we'll do authentication enable default group tacx enable and then we'll do triple a accounting commands 15 default and let's see it's okay it's start stop next and then group tacx and enter now, we're almost home free at that point, so the next thing we need to do is need to tell it TACAC server host and give it the IP address, which this is what's going to be in my case, 15.62, and then the key it's to use for authenticating to the TACAC server that it is supposed to be using that system. And like we did earlier, we'll start with the default of testing 123. Now, if you want to, and I'm not saying you have to, but if you want to have different TACX keys for different servers, then you would specify key and the TACX passphrase at the end of each TACX server host line. Don't have to. The All the uses I've seen over the years have used a, a, the same key for all of them. There are all sorts of things you can look to do. You can tell TACX to use a particular source interface on the machine. So if you have a management IP address and you've consistently deployed that across all the systems on your network, you can use this as yet another method to control what systems can get into the TACX servers. Like we saw in the first video, you can set up rules specifically so that only certain devices can authenticate against TACX even if they have the right passphrase. So you can really get to that level of granularity. And let's do, do a show line con zero. That's not quite where I wanted to go with that one, but we'll do a do show run. And this is another command that I use within TACX. And that's where I do privilege level 15 and that way as soon as you're authenticated because you specified your account either on the TACAC server or on the local account to be privilege level 15 you're automatically put into enable prompt so it's just it's a matter of personal preference you can still require the use of the enable command if you want to or you can decide not to and I also do logging synchronous that you see right there. That is something that, especially if you make an error or a message pops on the screen while you're making a, a change or whatever you have to be doing at that point, it doesn't interrupt what you're typing. It puts the message up and immediately replaces your command back on the screen where it was. So at this point, we're ready to do a little bit of testing. So we'll do test AAA group. TACX and we'll do admin, admin because that is the 
account that we've got created on there and we'll tell it legacy. Okay, successfully authenticated. So that says we're, we're ready to go at this point. Now there are a couple of other commands, actually about three, that you'll want to use when you're doing some uh, debugging as to what's going on in case you have a problem with TACX working correctly and you're not seeing anything on the Raspberry Pi that points you in the right direction. And there's three debug commands that I like to use. Debug AAA authentication and debug AAA authorization and then debug AAA accounting. Now at this point, we'll do a logout and let's here we go okay so we'll tell it to do admin admin and she's see log, login success on the website I've got a more detailed debug that you'll be able to see where it actually shows you the whole two-way exchange going back and forth so this is just you know one way of doing it you know, as with anything, for those of you who've worked with Cisco over the years, you know, there's always more than one way to do things. So this is, you know, a simple way to get it up and running. I'm looking at doing another YouTube video and post on my website where I talk about doing command level authorization, like I mentioned earlier. And then if there's enough interest, then I've got a Juniper switch that I will also walk through the process of doing TACX4 as well. I appreciate your time in watching this video and reading what's on my website. You can find out more information on this and seeing what else I've done in the Raspberry Pi series by going to www.ronnutter.com. And thank you again for your time.